Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a cozy fall cooking clean with me where I share my apple crisp recipe and a gluten-free hamburger helper recipe. So stay tuned for all of the motivation and goodness today. I'm waiting at the doorstep, finally home. Hi guys, like I said, we are doing a cooking clean with me today because look at my house. It is a complete disaster. I have been gone since like last Wednesday. So I had Taylor at my house last week and then Wednesday through pretty much Sunday morning I was gone helping set up for the wedding. So it was a complete disaster. I hadn't done my dishes in days. I was so busy running all over the place that I couldn't even do my dishes because of course I have to clean all of my dishes by hand. So everything was smelling mm, not the greatest and I'm just being super transparent and real with you guys because that's what mom life is and sometimes things get out of hand, things are just insane. A lot of the times I don't have Mike's help because he is in the garage working on M&M Rustic orders. So my plate was overfilled. There were just too many things going on last week and now being able to get the house a little bit cleaner and honestly I didn't even get to clean all of it so this is just a part one so stay tuned for a part two because I will be deep cleaning I have Kaya's birthday party coming up this weekend and I have family coming over to the house we're doing a potluck style birthday party and we're going to be doing an outdoor bonfire and slumber party just very COVID friendly and I would be inviting her friends but um, just like I said to keep it COVID friendly this year we are just going to do close family and we're going to make it the best birthday party ever with family so anyways I've got a lot to do I've got guests coming so you guys grab your coffee grab your to-do list and find all of the motivation in today's video clean with me and get those things done Days without water and long sun so grown We cross over borders to get where we are and it's all for you it's all for you it's all for you it's all for you It's all for you, it's all for you, it's all for you, it's all for you, I did it. 
it all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you.
for sure I've never been so close It's me and you 
on the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two. Hey, darling, you know we're gonna have a really good time. So sharing with you a gluten-free like cheeseburger, macaroni, hamburger helper style meal. Um, I did about a pound and a half of hamburger and I would not recommend using the hamburger from Walmart because that's what I use and it was not good. But regardless, pound and a half of hamburger, use the Bonza chickpea noodles. So I just did like the curly noodles. I'm not, I'm really bad with the names, but so like I said, I just use those curly noodles, whatever, and Bonza has a ton of different kinds of noodles. So I really enjoy their spaghetti noodles as well. Kaya loves them, kids, the kids love them, Mike loves them. We just prefer to use these instead of regular noodles to try and cut out as much gluten as we possibly can. So like I said, noodles, we got a pound and a half of hamburger, and then once you drain the noodles, and I like to actually rinse these noodles with cold water because I feel like it sets the noodle a little bit more. Then I used the double cheddar ragu. I've never used this before, and I was trying to come up with a healthier version of like cheeseburger macaroni. This is what I got. Um, this double cheddar, I looked all over the jar. I even Googled it. There is no gluten in here. Usually I like look for the gluten-free label, but there was no label on there. But no, there is no gluten in the double cheddar ragu. There is some cornstarch in there, um, but it is gluten-free. So I just did that, the double che I just did that double cheddar ragu with the chickpea noodles and the ground beef and you could even do like ground turkey or ground chicken breast which I would recommend because it got a little greasy um, but then you get your um, quote-unquote healthy or healthier version of cheeseburger macaroni at least a gluten-free version of cheeseburger macaroni all right moving into my next recipe is my apple crisp I'm doing a smaller batch because I don't have a huge crowd to feed this week. It's just me and the kids and Mike. So I did four apples. Now I will either do Fuji or Honeycrisp or Granny Smith. Um, here I'm just doing Fuji apples. I have four small Fuji apples and I'm peeling them and coring them and then I'm going to dice them up. Sometimes I will just slice them, which actually that's what I usually do is just slice them. I felt like dicing them today, so that's what I did, and, and actually made it go a little bit farther, which I liked as well, um, as far as like serving sizes. So anyways, as soon as you're done dicing up your apples, you're going to transfer them over to a saucepan. Once the apples are all diced up, you'll transfer the saucepan over to the stove top, and I did a quarter cup or four tablespoons of butter. And then I did a third a cup of brown sugar, and then I just did a dash of cinnamon. So I just covered the um, saucepan of apples with cinnamon. And then I sauteed that up until the apples were cooked all the way through. Um, as you guys can see here, so it took a little bit for these apples to cook all the way through. And I wanted to make sure that they were thoroughly coated. So those are my two tips to you guys. Make sure they're thoroughly coated with the brown sugar butter sauce and make sure that they're cooked all the way through before you put them in the oven. You don't want them to be soggy and disgusting, but you want them to be cooked all the way through so that they are tender. So while the apples are cooking, you're going to work on the topping. I do a half a cup of flour, you can use gluten-free flour, and then I use a half a cup of oats, and then I do a third cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of white sugar, and then I do a about a half a teaspoon of salt and a dash of cinnamon. I mix it all together. And then what I like to do is I will take four tablespoons of butter and I will dice it up into cubes and toss them in. Because like once they get coated with that flour and the sugar, they will not stick together. But then when the apple crisp is cooking in the oven, there's like little like spots of butter that help it to crisp up. It's so good. It's such a good hack, like cutting it up into like little chunks like that. So once everything is ready to go, I just transferred it over to a pan. I don't remember what the size of this one was. It was smaller than a nine by 13 because I was doing a mini batch. So I, then I just make sure that I space out those little butter squares that are inside of the topping. And then I put it in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes at 400 degrees. Once the apple crisp was cooked in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes at 400 degrees, you're going to want to take it out Stir around the top a little bit and just kind of mix up those oats and the butter. Just get everything nice and thoroughly coated with that buttery mixture. Put it back in the oven on broil for two to three minutes and ta-da!
All right, you guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this cook and clean with me, the cozy fall recipes, and I will see you guys in a couple of days for another really fun video, okay? Bye, you guys. Can't let go. It's not true.